I'm just going to take a quick look at setting up this uh, digital oscilloscope. Since when these things are turned off, they retain a lot of the settings, and you might not know what the scope was being used for, I always start with setup and default setup. If your scope is different, it might have a different uh, pattern of keystrokes to set that up, but you should be able to reset the scope to its uh, initial configuration. So that's what I just did. So now we're going to hook up our scope probe. And if you've never used uh, your probe with the scope before, you should calibrate it. I'm going to set the scope probe to 10 times. And then I'm going to click the input channel. And I'm going to make sure that it's also set to 10 times so that the scope probe and the input channel match. And then it's on the calibration hook. And I'm going to take a look at the wave. Now, this one's not too bad. Uh, if it needs adjustment, there's usually... Um, a non-magnetic screwdriver, and that's important, non-magnetic screwdriver to uh, adjust it. Uh, it usually comes with the probe. So if it is out of alignment, you would just turn the little screw that's in here, and you can see what it does to the wave, and you just want to adjust it till that's pretty much square. Just get the trigger level up there a little. So once it's square, then your probe is calibrated. Now, you saw earlier that I was having trouble. If you see the wave not being stable, it's usually an issue with the trigger. So if you're using channel one, the first thing you want to check is in the trigger section to make sure that you're actually triggering from channel one and that your level is somewhere in the middle of the wave. What this does is basically tells the scope at which voltage you want to start redrawing that wave from. And uh, if it's too low or too high, it's going to be impossible for the oscilloscope to freeze on the wave that you're trying to do. The other option here that you have is you can trigger the scope from the leading edge or from the trailing edge of the wave. So that's an option that you'll use often. Uh, the trigger source between channel 1 and channel 2 is what you'll want to do as well. You always want to trigger from a signal that actually has a source. Uh, and if you have two waves that you're looking at, you generally want to trigger off the slowest one. Okay, so now that the scope is calibrated, we're going to put that on and see what we're looking at. So we've got our function generator on there now and you see that the wave is not stable. So that's usually a triggering issue. So we are triggering from channel one and we're using channel one. So then it's just an issue with the trigger level. We'll just increase that a little and that will freeze the wave. And here you can see it. Okay, so for this lab we need a second probe. So I'm going to hook up the second probe. Now I want to take channel one off the screen. Generally with a digital oscilloscope, if you press the channel button twice, that will remove channel 1. So now I'm going to take channel 2. Uh, my probe is set to 10 times, so I'm going to make sure that my input channel is set to 10 times, which it is. Now again, the wave is not stable because we're triggering from channel 1 and my signal is on channel 2. So we're going to hit the edge button again, change the triggering to channel 2. That will stabilize it. And again, make the wave as big as possible for your adjustments. So we can see that it's out a little here. So I'm going to find the screw and adjust it until the wave is square. Move my trigger level up in the middle of the wave. There, it's calibrated as well. Now, as a general rule of thumb, uh, when you have two waves, uh, since we're using five volt signals, I set both channels to two volts per division. That allows me to have a wave on the top and a wave on the bottom. Uh, since channel 1 is my function generator, that's what I want to trigger from, so I'm going to change the trigger edge to A1 again. And now I'm ready to put both my channels on the scope. So again, in this class, which is digital logic, we're always using 5 volt signals, so I always set both channels to 2 volts per division. That allows me to very easily and comfortably show two waves on the scope at any given time.